We're there, John Phillips, back with the second hour. Thanking you for enduring the first hour. Because this second hour is going to be different. I like that. Different. <laughs> We read in Ephesians chapter 6. In Ephe I don't know what this is happening here. Every time after a break, I get this fuzz tone. So I just have to get off. And then I get back on. Okay. All right. <clears throat> this Ephesians chapter 6, verse 11, we read, Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. You know, it's the, the, the preachers stress put on the whole armor of God, but they never stress the wiles. What are the wiles? What are wiles? What well, comes from the Greek word methodia, from where we get our word method, and it means a trick or a stratagem intended to ensnare or deceive. A skill in outwitting. It's a method. It's an artifice. It's a cunning. It's a fraud. That's what the devil has. You see, he attacks, first of all, with an artifice, with a deception. And then he employs a host of, of agents to perpetrate it on his target. Now, he may perpetrate a deception or a lie, an artifice, a cunning, to get the Bible-believing man of God off into a heresy. And there are many of them rising today. So, he wants you to get off on a heresy that will pave the way for a political decision that will bring difficulty or destruction to your culture. As goes the church, so goes the country. So we want to stand up against the wiles of the devil. Because we wrestle with these creatures every day. You wrestle with them in resisting them. Some of the great passages of Scripture I use to rebuke the devil is the Lord rebuke thee, found in Jude, and also in the book of Zechariah. Yea, even the Lord of hosts rebuke thee, Satan. Or be gone, for thou savorest not the things of God, but the things of men. The devil doesn't care about God, but he wants men created in the image of God to worship him so that he can replace God. He wants to be like the Most High, you see. The devil wants one thing from you most of all, that is your worship, your service to him. Well, for the Christian man of God, we're not doing it. We refuse to do it. We do not participate in it. We will not worship him at least consciously. So the devil tries to get us to worship him, to serve him unconsciously. By pursuing a line of thinking or a line of action that really is, has, is a result of a deception. Okay. Now the child of God pursued a wrong line of action and hence he was in sin, but he was deceived and apparently did not ask the question before the Lord, am I being deceived? Oh, what's really going on here, Lord? Show me what's happening. As a white man, you know, I, I get angry with what's been done to us for the last 60 years, all the anti-white, black and feminist and you name it, attacks on us. And so we white men have a lot to be upset about. But what's the purpose of it? What's the end game of this policy of Washington? That's what we must ask ourselves. Am I to fall into the trap 
of a new right wing movement? Because we're getting it. Starts with the Tea Party, and then with the Tea Party, we have the Trump movement. And because what Trump says for the vast majority of what he says is true, the average guy, the average white working man in this country today is completely for him and should be, except we don't know we're being led down a primrose path to destruction. And so to help you with this understanding, I first of all recommend that you get my book, Vatican Assassins, Wounded in the House of My Friends. Now I know you can download it. They've been pirating it everywhere, and i got to get on some of these people. But order it from me. Go to the website. Order Vatican Assassins eBooks for 30 bucks for a download. 1,836 pages, 1,760 pictures and portraits. Go get it. Read it. More quotations in there. It's th- three quarters, two thirds to three quarters quotations, and only one quarter of my gibberish. Okay? My conclusions. But I'll give it to you in a nutshell. At least the last several chapters. The Jesuit order runs Western civilization. The Jesuit order. And it's Roman hierarchy that it controls. And Skull and Bones and Scottish Rite Freemasonry and the Knights of Malta and the Knights Templars and the Knights of the Equestrian Order and it goes on and on. The Knights of Columbus are all run by the Black Pope for the benefit of the White Pope, Bogoglio, Francis I, to restore his political temporal power around the world. That's all politics is today. That's it. Nothing more, nothing less. And then there are the few men and women that decide to resist it. Every now and then they'll come along. Abraham Lincoln attempted to resist it. He said the whole war was caused by the Jesuits and the priests of Rome, as recorded in Charles Chinnicky's 50 Years in the Church of Rome, which you can listen to on my website because listen now because I'm going to be taking it down and selling it as a set. 50 bucks. His entire book is now can be listened to. We have James Garfield, the same thing. Another condemned Protestant who could rewrite Greek with one hand and Latin with the other hand at the same time. Uh, Just, we got to kill that man because he doesn't want to submit to the Pope's temple power. We're going to kill Victor Emmanuel II, the king of Italy in the 1870s or so, because he took the temporal power from the Pope, and so we will kill King Victor Emmanuel II. We'll kill his son, Umberto I, in 1900 with our anarchists because he further resisted the temporal power of the Pope. We'll kill Tsar Alexander II in 1871 or so, because he was 1881, because he resists the temporal power of the Pope. We'll blow his legs off. We'll kill Sissy, Elizabeth, the Empress of Austria, the wife of Franz Joseph. We're gonna, we're gonna, we'll send a Jesuit assassin in Switzerland. While they're in Switzerland, she's walking with a Rothschild lady, and she is there walking with her, and a man comes up and stabs a three-sided file through her chest and, and nicks her heart. And she dies a few hours later. That's the murder of Sissy, the greatest equestrian of, of female in Europe, because the beautiful Sissy helped von Dollinger, priest von Dollinger, resist the Vatican I and the, and the infallibility of the Pope. And she also uh, resisted the Jewish fury that was arising in the Austria Hungarian Empire that paved the way for rounding up of Jews and sending them to Auschwitz and other places. Sissy resisted that. So she got a knife through the heart from some anarchist, some Jesuit. In 
You see, these kings and queens, they know the power of the Jesuits, and there's not one alive today that dare cross his swords with them. And that includes Prince Philip of England. They know. The Jesuits run the papacy. That means they run, they control the College of Cardinals. The Jesuits control the most powerful cardinals in America, the Archbishop of New York City, Timothy Cardinal Dolan, the Archbishop of Chicago, the Archbishop of Boston, the Archbishop of, of Washington. The Jesuits control them, the Archbishop of San Francisco, the Archbishop of Los Angeles. The Jesuits control them all. Now in control of the Roman hierarchy, it's through the Roman hierarchy that the Jesuits control the intelligence community of America. They control the Central Intelligence Agency. The Jesuits control the director, the DCI, the Director of Central Intelligence and have controlled every director of central intelligence since the first one really was wasn't Alan Dulles, it was that traitor, that army traitor, who was, oh, his name will lose me right now. Oh, what was his name? Anyway, Patton said he will not be my pole bearer. And Patton said that general will not be my pole bearer, he's a traitor, and I want you to appoint my right-hand man, Sergeant Meeks, George Meeks, to be my pallbearer in his place. And so here we have General Patton with a black <laughs> enlisted man as one of his pallbearers, surrounded by other generals. The CIA is run by knights, Leon Panetta was a knight of Malta. Alan Dulles was a knight of Malta, even though he's Presbyterian, still not a Malta. William J. Casey was a knight of Malta. And William J. Casey worked with the Mafia Gambino family through another man called Albert Vincent Caron, who was the, one of the heads of the Gambino families and a Knight of Malta. When his daughter was married, one part of the reception hall had the Mafia in it, and the other part had all the government workers. And we learned this from his own daughter. The Jesuits run the Central Intelligence Agency and the Mafia. In the providence of God, I was speaking to a former CIA assassin many years ago when I was having blood irradiation therapy, or uh, EDTA, chelation. And I was talking about the Jesuits running the CIA and the mafia. And John said to me, you know, Eric, we need to talk. And he went out to meet with me and he said, I don't want to talk in your house because the agency can hear everything we're talking about. Let's go talk in the field 100 yards, 200 yards away. So we did. And he said, Eric, I was a sniper in Korea. And I was recruited into the CIA as a long distance sniper. And he said, they ordered me to teach a Gambino mafia soldier long range sniping. I said, really? That's right. Then he said, you better start talk, stop talking about this, Eric, because you are a young guy then, you know, 20 years ago. You got a family. You got some children. I said, no, I can't do that. I've got to do my duty. To this one sniper that I met, he showed me and, and admitted to me that, hey, Mafia and the CIA work together. That same guy wanted to sell me a high standard 22 silenced <laughs> took me out in his backyard and so i want to show you how this works eric i use this in the back of a guy's head it was a hundred thousand dollar contract 
And I thought, I'd love to have it, but you know what? That's all I need to have a, to be rated here and be found with a silence 22. So the mafia and the CIA work together. Now, you may not want to believe that, but if you don't, just watch the movie JFK. I'll tell you the same thing. David Ferry, the mafia and the CIA working together. More than you can dream. He's exactly right. But you white men, you don't care that the mafia and the CIA work together, do you? You don't really care. Just as long as you have a football game on Sunday. Right? That's all that matters. And you won't take any steps to resist this, will you? Now we'll just have another glass of tea. The Jesuits run all the mobs. They run the Russian mob, the Italian mob. The Italian mob oversees everything. There's no Russian mafia without Italian mafia. And the Archbishop of Sicily, for the most part, runs that. So you have the Jesuits running the mob, so they're running the, all the dope trade. And they also run the intelligence community. That's why there's a book titled, titled uh, Dope Inc. And if you read the book titled Dope Inc., you will see that the intelligence community and the mafia works together. If you read another book called Dark Alliance, written by Gary Webb, you can also see that the mafia and CIA work together. And I have several other books in the collusion between George Bush, the mafia, and the CIA, all working together. Bringing tons and tons of dope into this country every day, making a killing, financing their black ops. That's why William J. Casey said, why, of course we ran dope. We were involved in the drug trade because we used those profits to fight communism. Give me a break. William J. Casey was trained by Jesuits at Fordham University. He was a Knight of Malta. He loved that traitor Ronald Reagan, the worst president we ever had, because Reagan and his Senate recognized the political nation, the sovereign nation of the sovereign state of Vatican City in 1984, so this military government could engage in a concordat with the Pope in a future day, as did Hitler, as did Stalin secretly, as did Franco as did Mussolini. You like that? That's Ronald Reagan. Ronald Reagan, whose, whose friend, Billy Boy Clinton, was the governor of, of uh, Missouri at the time. And if you watch the Clinton Chronicles, it'll show you that Clinton's running the drugs, but it's not going to tell you that he's doing it with in conjunction with Ronald Reagan, who's the president of the United States at the time. A Republican and a Democrat running the drug trade for the Pope. And you want to tell me there's any difference? And by the way, the real handler of Ronald Reagan was George Herbert Walker Bush. And guess who George Work Herbert Walker Bush is? He's the father of, of, of uh, Billy Clinton, William Jefferson Clinton. And I got that from a CIA agent that took my course. He overheard Barbara say to, say to George, he says, well, what are you going to get your son for birthday? And George says, I don't know. And she said, well, you should know. What are you going to get Bill for his birthday? And, and uh, George said, well, I don't know. And he says, well, she, she said, you should know because he's your son. Why do you think the Bush boys released this on Trump? Because, the, because Clinton is the son of George Herbert Walker Bush, and Clinton is the husband of Hellcat, and so the Bushes are facilitating a Hillary election because it's all in the family, boys. Can I get an amen? You see, this is what preachers ought to be preaching in the pulpit. And preachers ought to be telling their people the facts. Let them vote how they want to vote, but give them the facts. They'll do the right thing. God's people who read the Bible will do the right thing. He's got to tell them the truth. That's the hard part. So what we have is we have the international intelligence community all working together. That means the CIA is working with the KGB, now the FSB, or SVR, whatever you want to call it. It's the same, same group of boys. Lapdogs for the Pope. Putin was, quote-unquote, former KGB. 
or I mean, Obama's put there by the CIA. Obama's just a CIA operative, and Putin is, is an SVR operative. They're working together. They're friends. It's just the press that tells us they're enemies. Just like Nixon and Mao Zedong, heavy on the dung, worked together during the Vietnam War. Mao and Nixon worked together. While Nixon was advised by the papal court Jew, Henry Killinger. He's called Henry Killinger by the Cypriots for what Kissinger did in getting the Turks to invade Cyprus in 1974. Kissinger working for the Pope. The Pope hating the Orthodox Cypriots. So we'll bring the fanatical Muslims in there to take over half the island, and we'll, then we'll make a uh, besieged city of Nicosia for how many years so it's a divided city, half in the Turks and half in the Greek Orthodox. So the international intelligence community works together. That includes Interpol, all working together. And it was perfected during World War I, World War II, and the Cold War. Perfected. You see, that's why Hans Felfi, who was the right-hand man of uh, Reinhard Galen with the Gellin Org and this BND, Hans Felfi, after 20 years working for Reinhard Galen, was discovered to be a Soviet agent. <laughs> with Marcus Wolf, head of the Stasi in East Germany. So Marcus Wolf and Reinhard Gellin are working together through Hans Felfi, a former SS man, perfecting and building the intelligence community in the world. Berlin was a divided city, so there would be a place for KGB and CIA to meet and work together. Why do you think Hungary was betrayed in 1956 with that uprising. It was betrayed so that the true nationalists would be killed and taken off to Gulag. And the CIA participated in that treason, in that betrayal. Why do you think Prague was invaded with tanks in 1968? And all the leading Czechs, there are probably many of them Protestants, that were revolting against their Soviet occupation. They were all arrested and taken to Gulag, betrayed by Alan Dulles of the CIA. Of course, it wasn't Alan Dulles then. He was relieved, so it would be, what, John McCone, or maybe it was uh, that other traitor. But they, the CIA heads betrayed the patriots of Prague, Czechoslovakia, 1968. Richard Helms. Why do you think the Poles were betrayed in World War II when they were incited to have the up Warsaw Uprising and they said they would be backed by American power and OSS and they were automatically betrayed when they rose up against the Nazis occupying Warsaw and Joseph Stalin and his Red Armies sitting on the outskirts in the forest letting all the Polish nationalists get killed, some 60,000 of them. Why? Because we got to put Poland under the Soviets during, World, during the Cold War, and we got to kill some more of these Polish nationalists because the Polish men love their country and consider the Polish flag sacred, as everybody ought to in their own countries. Both sides working together to kill nationalists and targeted populations. Why do you think Hitler stopped his panzers at Dunkirk and refused to bomb and strafe 250,000 British soldiers and allowed them to escape back to Great Britain when they could have been annihilated? Why? Because Churchill and Hitler worked together. Why do you think General Patton was not allowed to close the Falaise pocket in France that would have captured 250,000 German soldiers? And he went to Eisenhower and said, listen, Ike, all I got to do is close that pocket of Falaise France in there, and we have the German army surrounded, and we will either destroy them or they will surrender. And you know what Ike said? Let them go! Don't close the Falaise pocket! And Patton was absolutely astounded. So Patton's going to try to talk about it later, for which he's going to be murdered. By Wild Bill Donovan, Irish Roman Catholic, not a Malta, hitting OSS for the Pope. 
They're all working together. FDR and Church Hitler working together. You know why? They couldn't close the fillet's pocket? That would have ended the war. They can't have the end of the war in 44 because we've got nearly a million more Jews to kill in the concentration camps. That'll stop the, the purging of the Jews out of Eastern Europe and Western Europe. We can't let them do that. We've got to send more to Auschwitz. See how they're working together? Are you getting it? Vietnam realized Mao and Nixon worked together. Mao and LBJ. He got Kennedy out of the way because he wanted to get out of Nam by 1965. So we got LBJ there, that apostate Protestant, serial adulterer. Trump is an altar boy compared to LBJ. Trump is an, L an altar boy compared to Ronnie Reagan. He was Reagan was a pedophile. He loved kitty for porn. That's what Kathy O'Brien tells us in her book, Transformation of America, which I'm going to be reading a portion of it. After the break here. Vietnam. Mao and, and Johnson working together for the destruction of the Buddhist manhood in Vietnam. Calling them all communists. Meanwhile, the American military training the North Vietnamese so they'll be a viable force. Trained them during the daytime. At night, they were Charlie. I had a friend of mine that was in Nam. He said, Eric, he said, I was in the Navy. He said, we watched the oil freighters go into, go into the north to Hanoi and unload half their load and then come down to Saigon and unload the rest of it, fueling both sides of the war, bringing oil to, to Saigon as well as to Hanoi. What kind of war is that? It's called a controlled war where both sides are run by leaders and subject to the This is the Eric John Phelps Show on 24 7 World Radio. This is Brother Jack. I invite you to listen to my broadcast on 24 7 World Radio.com. I preach the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ to the Polish-speaking people scattered around the whole world. Furthermore, I defend the Reformation in Poland, Polish Protestants and Baptists, and Polish Reformation Bible. I also expose the Counter-Reformation in my homeland, led by the Jesuits and by the Roman Catholic Institution. Join me every Thursday at 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on 247worldradio.com. Tu Bat Jacek, zapraszam Was do wysłuchania mojej audycji na 247 worldradio.com. Głoszę Ewangelię Pana Jezusa Chrystusa ludziom mówiącym po polsku rozproszonym po całym świecie. Ponadto bronię reformacji w Polsce, polskich protestantów i baptystów oraz polskiej Biblii reformacyjnej. Demaskuję również kontreformację w mojej ojczyźnie kierowaną przez jezuitów i przez rzymsko-katolicką instytucję. Dołącz do mnie w każdy czwartek o godzinie 17 czasu wschodnioamerykańskiego na 247worldradio.com. This is brother Nicholas. Join me every Tuesday at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time for the German Bible Truth Hour and at 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time for the Dutch Bible Truth Hour on 24-7 World Radio. This is Bruder Nicolas. Ich lade euch herzlich ein, mich anzuhören, jeder Dienstag am 2 Uhr nachmittags, amerikanische Zeit, für die deutsche Bibelwahrheitsstunde und 3 Uhr amerikanische Standardzeit für die niederländische Bibelwahrheitsstunde am World Radio 24-7. Dit is Bruder Nico. U bent hartelijk uitgenodigd om elke dinsdag om 2 uur Amerikaanse standaardtijd het Duitse Bijbelwaarheidsuur te volgen en 3 uur Amerikaanse standaardtijd het Nederlandse Bijbelwaarheidsuur te volgen op 24-7 World Radio. This is 24-7 World Radio. And you're listening to The Eric John Phelps Show. Brother Eric John Phelps back with the second hour, continuing on. So we see that 
The Jesuits, with their minions, control both sides of these wars. They control both sides in Korea. When MacArthur landed his naval forces, again, I have this uh, fuzz. When MacArthur landed his When MacArthur landed his naval forces at Incheon in Korea, where the tide rose and fell 40 feet, he left his destroyers on the beach. And he set back the North Koreans tremendously and was able to win the Korean War if he would have been allowed. But you know what happened? MacArthur was a bad boy. He did not obey his brother Freemason, Dirty Harry Truman. And so Truman flies to Wake Island in the Pacific. Arthur, MacArthur is ordered to meet him there, at which place MacArthur is relieved of his command by Dirty Harry. Because you see, Korea cannot be won. The American military that won in World War II can't win a little skirmish. In Korea? Because the military government running the country since March 9th, 1933 was beginning to beat down and beginning the destruction of the powerful American military that was built during World War II. While at the same time, they're going to kill off Korean men who are nationalists in North and South that love their country. And then ultimately, Korea is going to be divided, what at the 38th parallel. And it's going to be a ceasefire, but the war continues to rage. Because the real secret purpose of the Korean War, Mao bringing Chinese troops down through the north, and Truman using American troops, the real purpose of the war is that Truman and Mao, both Freemasons, by the way, would be used to discourage and demoralize the American military in conjunction with forced integration, of course, which was terrible for it, American military, and while killing Korean nationalists so that they ultimately would militarize South Korea with the rocks, great fighting force of the South Koreans, and also with the Korean military in the north to ultimately then merge them into one huge militaristic nation to be used against us here in North America someday. That's the purpose of it. You mark my words, Korea will, South Korea will fall without a shot firing. They will unite with the North, and there'll be one huge military force in league with Red China for our invasion. And guess what? Both sides were built by Washington, D.C. That's why we were not allowed to win Korea, because both sides worked together for the purposes of the Pope in its counter-reformation design of destroying historic white Anglo-Saxon, Protestant, and Baptist Western civilization. That's how we understand Korea. How about Vietnam? Vietnam. Well, we're going to get involved in Vietnam there, and really from 1945 to 1965. 1945 to 1975 for 30 years. <clears throat> Pardon me. And what's the purpose of that? It's the purpose to kill the Buddhist leadership there because the Buddhists don't have any time for the Pope. The CIA took the Dalai Lama out of Tibet in 1959 so they could ultimately control the Pope of Buddhism. By the way, the Dalai Lama is also a high Freemason too, betraying his own people. So they're going to get in. Vietnam, and Vietnam is going to be called Spelly's War, Francis Cardinal Spellman's War. And Francis Spellman will go to Vietnam in 1965, and they're going to call, they're going to call uh, it Spelly's War. And he's going to call 
the the uh, American soldiers, the soldiers of Christ. You can read this in a book called The American Pope by John Sweeney, written in 1988. Read it and weep. There's another book I have here called Vietnam, Why Did We Go? The Shocking Story of the Catholic Church's, quote-unquote, role in starting the Vietnam War by Avro Manhattan. That was written in 1984. Now listen to this. The Pope used a powerful Knight of Columbus who was in charge of the American Navy to bring hundreds of thousands of North Vietnamese Roman Catholics down to the South because they spread the propaganda that the Virgin Mary and Jesus Christ went South. So as we read, and on page 33 we read, quote, The following year, another fanatical Catholic was appointed to another important post. Mr. Francis Matthews was nominated Secretary of the American Navy. That's during Dirty Harry Truman's presidency. On the morning he took the oath of office in June 1945, Mr. Matthews, his wife, and all their six children contritely heard Mass and received Holy Communion in the chapel of the Naval Station in Washington, D.C. A few months afterwards, October 1949, Cardinal Spellman was summoned to Rome by the Pope, with whom he had repeated and prolonged private sessions. Remember, Spellman and Pius XII were bosom buddies during World War II. They traveled Europe together with, with the Pope's concubine, the Popessa. Read the book La Popessa, a German nun that was, that was Pacelli's concubine. Although giving rise to sharp speculation, it remained a well-guarded secret, what Spellman and the Pope talked about. The new Catholic secretary of the U.S. Navy, strangely enough, soon afterwards began unusually active contacts with other prominent American Catholics. Among these, Father Walsh, Jesuit vice president of Georgetown University. This is the diabolical Jesuit, Edmund Walsh, who's a knight of Malta, as well as a powerful Jesuit, who would be the advisor of had been the advisor of FDR, secret advisor to Truman, advisor to Eisenhower, tried to be an advisor to Kennedy, but uh, he wouldn't be an advisor to Kennedy, he'd be an advisor to Eisenhower. Walsh is going to die, I believe, in 57, 58, something like that. But Edmund Walsh is one of the architects of the Vietnam War. They pushed this constant war crusade. He said and they were advocating preventive atomic war by a, advocacy of a preventive atomic war by a supreme knight of Columbus, i.e. Mr. Matthews, assumed horrifying significance when it was remembered that the Secretary of the U.S. Navy's war speech did not come as a surprise to certain selected Catholic leaders or even less to the Vatican. How is that? Simply that Mr. Matthews had disclosed the contents of his Boston speech to top Catholics several days prior to its delivery. Chief among those, these top Catholics was head of the U.S. Catholic hierarchy, Cardinal Spellman. Francis Cardinal Spellman. That's right. And St. Patrick's Cathedral was known as the Little Vatican. On page 59, we read in Vietnam, Why Do We Go? Quote, Jesus Christ and the Virgin Mary go south. DM, who was a fanatical Roman Catholic and persecuted the Buddhists, uh, started at once to set in motion the Vatican USA CIA grand strategy directed at the preservation and consolidation of South Vietnam. So he goes on, he persecutes the Buddhists. And <clears throat> we read about what he did. Page 60, having succeeded in his first act of defiance, GM then set out promoting another no less spectacular move. <clears throat> Pardon me. The basic idea was to disrupt the North Vietnamese government by engineering a vast internal dislocation of North Vietnamese population. The machination had three main objectives. Number one, the weakening of the North. Number two, a damaging smear campaign against the communists. And three, the immediate strengthening of South Vietnam by the mass absorption of fellow Catholics. The policy had the gravest implications, both for the North as well as for the South. The scheme had been conceived not in Vietnam, but simultaneously at Washington and at the Vatican. It was the brainchild of Cardinal Spellman, of Pius XII, and the two Dulles brothers, 
after which we have the Dulles Airport in Washington, D.C., DM and certain American military elements who godfathered it at once. The participation of Pius XII had an even more sinister objective. We shall look at it presently. Fletcher Prouty shows that in pictures that they were bringing over a million North Vietnamese into the South on, on American ships. They coordinated both sides. Ho Chi Minh and Diem worked together. They were both working together. Remember, the entire, all the weapons and ammunition that was to be given to the American soldiers that were to invade Japan if the atomic devices were not detonated, 500,000 American men were to invade Vietnam and all the weapons, since they were not needed, were given to Ho Chi Minh. That's according to Colonel Fletcher Prouty in a personal tape that I heard from him. What does this mean? It means they're all working together. And it goes to the same thing now. The Muslim leaders and Obama and all the other leaders involved in this are all working together. So what's the purpose of this broadcast? Well, one of the purposes is to show you that Clinton and Trump are working together. Now, I'm going to read a portion to you that is absolutely disgusting. How that Hillary Clinton is a lesbian and enjoys lesbian sex. According to a witness that wrote a book, her name is Kathy O'Brien. She was a presidential prostitute uh, pre uh, uh, prepared by the CIA and the mafia to be what's called a presidential model. She was a prostitute to Reagan, Bush, Trafficant, Vanderjet, Dick, Dick Thornburg of Pennsylvania. All these names are in this book. You need to get it called Trance. T-R-A-N-C-E colon Formation of America. And on page 155, we read, Hall's wife led me away and locked me in a back bedroom. After an intermediate, intermediate period of time, I heard her telephone Hillary at the guest villa. She then drove me up the mountain through the dark street to meet with Hillary. Although I had previously met Hillary, we had very little to say to each other particularly since I was still dazed and tranced from the tortures I had endured at the CIA near-death trauma center in Lampy. Hillary knew I was a mind-controlled slave, and like Bill Clinton, just, look, just took it in stride as a quote-unquote normal part of life in politics. Hillary was fully clothed and stretched out on the bed sleeping when Hall's wife and I arrived. Hillary, I brought you something you really enjoy. Kind of an unexpected surprise. Bill ordered her out of the meeting, and I took her to my bedroom and made an interesting discovery. She is literally a two-faced, referring to my vaginal mutilation carving, which, upon which her portion of her vagina was carved a, a, a Baphomet pentagram. She's literally a two-faced B-I-T-C-H. Hmm. Hillary opened her eyes and sleepily roused herself. Show me. Hall's wife ordered me to take my clothes off while Hillary watched. Now, this is not for children, so you need to send them away from the radio, okay? Please? But you need to know this. All you Hillary lovers, you need to know this. And this is something Donald Trump should make public, but he won't. You know why? Because they're working together. Let's go on. Is she clean? Hillary asked, meaning disease-free. Of course she's birds. That's Senator Bird from West Virginia. That pervert. Thank God he's gone to his place. She's birds, she responded, continuing the, con the conversation as though I were not there. Plus, I heard Houston say something about her being a presidential model, whatever the hell that's supposed to mean, unquote. It means she's clean, unquote, Hillary said matter-of-factly as she stood up. I was not capable of giving thought to such things back then, but I am aware in retrospect that all presidential model slaves I knew seemed to have an immunity to social diseases. It was a well-known fact that the circles, that in the circles I was sexually passed around in, the government-level mind-controlled sex slaves were clean, quote-unquote, to the degree that none of my abusers took precautions such as wearing condoms. Hall's wife, now this is not for children. Please send them away if they're listening. 
Hall's wife patted the bed and instructed me to display the mutilation. Hillary exclaimed, God, and immediately began, began performing oral sex on me. Apparently aroused by the carving in my vagina, Hillary stood up and quickly peeled out of her matronly nylon panties and pantyhose. Uninhibited, despite a long day in the hot sun, she gasped. Then she gasped. She wanted oral sex in a most profane way. I had no choice but to comply with her orders, and Bill Hull's wife made no move to join me in that distasteful task. Hillary had resumed examining my hideous mutilation and performing oral sex on me when Bill Clinton walked in. Hillary lifted her head to ask how to go. Clinton appeared totally unaffected by what he walked into, tossed his jacket on a chair and said, it's official. I'm exhausted. I'm going to bed. That's page 155 of the book Trance, Formation of America, the true story of a CIA mind control slave by Kathy O'Brien with Mark Phillips. You got to get the book. You got to read it. This is Hillary. And she's having a tizzy, what Trump said, when this is her in print. <clears throat> they both work together. They both work together. So what is the purpose of this all? And by the way, I also know, concerning back to Nam again, that Again, the working together of, of Mao and Johnson. They had secret CIA teams, assassin teams, that were based in Cambodia. And you know what these assassination teams would do? They would kill American officers who wanted to win the Vietnam War. That's right. You like that? All you American officers ought to have the utmost disdain and contempt for the CIA because the moment you want to win a war, they're going to relieve you of your command and they're going to kill you because the CIA and the FSB and the Chinese Secret Intelligence Service and whoever else are all working together. It's like Bill and Donald. But what's the end game of all of this? What are they moving us to? White men were being played. Were being played. Now just think of it. O'Reilly asked a question of Trump last night. It seems to me that you're not really attacking Hillary like you should. And he brings up an example. That's right, Billy. And you know why, Bill O'Reilly, Roman Catholic, you make a million dollars a week. Or more. Maybe more like two. He knows why. Because it's a stage play. It's an act. To make sure Hillary gets into office. I tell you, if I was Donald Trump, I would have devastated her long ago. But he doesn't want to. Just enough to make it look like he's against her, but not enough to rout her. Because, you see, the purpose is twofold. It's to drive the blacks and the lesbians, to drive the six-sided enemy that they're creating. Concerning, It's going to be all the blacks, no matter if they're civil or savage. Drive the blacks, the communists, the Muslims, the illegals, alien Roman Catholic Mexican invaders. They're not immigrants. They're invaders. Say the word invader. They're not immigrants. Sodomites, the LGBT pervert community. And lastly, the Jews, because the Jews voted for Obama. The Jews generally are always left wing. Because they're suckers. To the intent that a huge right wing, angry block of white men with rightful, legitimate grievances would be formed out of this movement, then to be, then to be cleverly manipulated into Blaming the Jews. Is it not George Soros behind the Black Lives Matter? That filthy racist operation? 
Is it not George Soros that was behind Barry, da behind Barry Davis Obama, who is being sued along with Eric Holder, the mulatto racist, and Al Sharpton, and Louis Farrakhan, and Jesse Jackson, and others, and Black Lives Matter? They're being sued by the head of Judicial Watch for, uh, Judicial Watch for fomenting a race war against Caucasians and Jews. Did the press report that to you lately? Huh? That was filed in July. The whole purpose is, is to drive to polarize the blacks, which are about 25% to 30% of the population. It ain't no 12%. Don't believe that lie. And all these other people into the left and then to bring the, all the white middle class, the hard work, I mean, the men that build this country, into this new right fascist movement, then cause a black on white race war incited in all the major cities to then drive the country into right wing fascism and open up the camps where we learned in the Iran Contra investigation that these camps were prepared for quote, 21 million American Negroes, unquote. Do you see how they're following their plan? And Oliver North knows all about it. Why don't they tell us that on Fox News? Because both spectrums are controlled. Both spectrums will never tell us the whole truth. Fox will get closest to telling the most truth, but never the whole truth, because they themselves would then be exposed for the conspirators they are with Roman Catholic Knight of, Knight of Equestrian Order Rupert Murdoch. But there's other Roman Catholics of MSNBC like Lawrence O'Donnell and, and Chris Matthews, who's... Mentor was a Kennedy cover-up man in the Kennedy assassination, Patrick Monaghan. So this is the game. This is the game. What's the solution? The first solution is we white men need to truly turn from our idols. God has commanded all men everywhere to repent. That's a turning away from something. Namely our idols, to serve the one and true living God. By believing that Christ died for our sins, that he was buried and that he rose again. And upon believing that gospel, God will save you, give you a new life in Christ and the spirit of God, which will enable us to have discernment in these matters. Then once we put away our idols and stop serving sin and start doing that which is right, God will begin to turn the tide for us by certain revelations and certain exposés, and certain individuals will come forward and start telling the truth, and that will create an avalanche, like a domino effect for good. But if we refuse and have no need for God, especially we white men in Christ, we don't want to repent, turn from our sins, and continue to fall into the line of the, of the Trump-Pence movement, we're going to reap because neither one of these guys are going to tell us the whole truth. And definitely the socialist, communist, Democrats won't tell us the truth. We have to believe the gospel. We have to be saved. We have to be born again. And then we have to advocate either the, repe the repeal of the Emergency Banking Relief Act. So therefore, we no longer will be under military government or your state must declare its independence right now. We must kiss the empire goodbye because its capital is run by the devil through the Jesuits and that Archbishop of Washington, D.C. and Georgetown University. Either repeal that so we can get back to civilian government in our states or it's time to declare independence. And then we white men can have our own country somewhere. White Bible-believing Protestants and Baptists are speaking. English. We'll take our own country. Black Bible-believing Baptists and Protestants, they can have their own country. We, I'd like to border them. We can have bordered countries. But we're separate. We're racially separate. We respect each other, race, language, and culture. And we're not going to participate in this forced miscegenation, which is weakening us day by day more and more and demoralizing us. Thanks to this military government and socialist communist operations since the dirty, filthy Franklin Danable Roosevelt. Will you advocate this? Just remember, Trump 
and Clinton work for the same master, and he is the Pope of Rome. Brother Eric John Phelps, thank you for tuning in today. I have a book, Vatican Assassins, Wounded in the House of My Friends. Just go to my website, vaticanassassins.org, download my book, it only cost you 30 bucks, and uh, purchase some other things there. I have Clear and Present Evil and my PowerPoint Truth Cons, Con Con. Something there will be for your edification. Please purchase it if you would. I'm also looking for supporters. Thank you again for that gift yesterday, my friend. I deeply appreciate it. So I'm looking for white men that can give 500, 1,000 bucks a month. Can you do that? There's a lot of you white men out there that could easily do that. A lot of you. You're either going to give it to resist this or you're going to lose it all when the fascists take over. Because remember, fascism takes over all manufacturers, nationalizes industry, and you had nothing. When the banks fail, I recommend that you be out of the banks. And that's why I recommend cryptocurrency. I recommend one coin. Because it's not, you're not going to suffer as much as those with their funds in the banks if you're in cryptocurrency. So email. Last. So until Friday, it'll fair enough. You're listening to your source for the truth from Feature Story News.